This presentation is to tell you about the 2013 child care regulation changes for the child care assistance program. The following child care regulations have had adopted emergency and or ordinary amendments. Emergency regulation amendments were effective April 1st, 2013. All other ordinary amendments will be effective November 8th, 2013. This tutorial will highlight the regulation changes that will directly impact child care providers in the child care assistance program. You can access a full copy of the child care regulations at this website. Federal poverty level, effective July 1st, 2013, a child shall be eligible for the child care assistance program if the family's income is less than or equal to 100% of the federal poverty level at the initial application or 100% of the federal poverty level at the redetermination or eligibility recalculation. A family that has become ineligible for KTAP shall remain eligible for CCAP for 12 months from the date of the KTAP discontinuance if the family's income remains less than or equal to 100% of the federal poverty level. Changes for registered providers can be viewed at this website. A child care provider registered shall not be paid for more than three children receiving CCAP per day or six children receiving CCAP per day if those children are part of a sibling group and related to the provider. Application changes. A child living with the provider acting in place of a parent is considered related to the provider. DCC will conduct an address search of the sex offender registry on all registered provider applicants. Training. A new registered provider must provide, provide verification that the applicant has obtained cabinet-approved pediatric abuse of head trauma training within 90 days of application to be renewed every five years. In addition to six hours of training approved by the cabinet in the areas of health, safety, and sanitation, recognition of child abuse and neglect, developmentally appropriate child care practice. Registered providers cannot deny access to a child in care or the provider's records during the hours of child care services are provided. Reporting requirements. Registered providers must report a discontinuation or disqualification from a government assistance program due to fraud or abuse of that program within 24 hours of discovery. Registered providers must report an incident involving a fire or other emergency, including a vehicle accident when the provider is transporting a child receiving child care services. Additional reasons for denial. Registered providers can be denied or revoked if the applicant or provider has been discontinued or disqualified from participation in the child care assistance program, including an intentional program violation. Registered providers can be denied or revoked if the applicant or provider has been discontinued or disqualified from another government assistance program due to fraud or abuse of the program. Additional reasons for denial. Registered providers can be denied or revoked if the applicant or provider knowingly misrepresents or submits false information on a form required by the cabinet. Registered providers can be denied or revoked if the applicant or provider refuses access by the cabinet, the cabinet designee, or another agency with regulatory authority to a child in care, the location of a child in care, or the provider's records during the hours that the child care services are provided. Also, registered providers can be denied or revoked if the applicant or provider has had a previous ownership interest in a child care provider which had a prior certification, license, registration, or permit to operate, denied, suspended, revoked, or voluntarily relinquished as a result of an investigation or pending adverse action. Application after denial. The cabinet may allow application if seven years has passed since the date of a prior denial, suspension, or revocation. The certification, license, registration, or permit was voluntarily relinquished as a result of an investigation or pending adverse action, or of the last day of legal remedies being exhausted, or of the final order from an administrative hearing. Further application after denial. If allowed to apply, the applicant must comply with all of the requirements for registration, including meeting the criteria of all background checks, and provide verification of an additional 12 hours of training approved by the Cabinet in early care and education. CCAP child care provider requirements. 
the child care daily attendance record. A universal attendance form is now required for all child care providers participating in CCAP. The child care daily attendance record, also known as DCC 94E, is a form that should be legible, completed daily, detail arrival and departure times of each child in care, and has to be signed by the parent or applicant designee. These records must be kept for five years. A copy of the form is posted at this website. The form is a requirement for the Child Care Assistance Program. The applicant for a child is to report if the applicant suspects the child care provider is not complying with the new attendance record requirements to use this form. Here's an example of the DCC 94E, the Child Care Daily Attendance Record. Cooperation and verification. There are improved cooperation and verification requirements for a CCAP recipient and participating child care provider. The cooperation will facilitate quality control and case review processes, eligibility determination, and access to a child care provider's premises, records, and children in the provider's care during the hours of operation. A recipient who fails to, to cooperate with the cabinet quality control or case review shall be discontinued from CCAP benefits and unable to participate in CCAP until the requirements of call quality control or case review are met. Criteria for non-payment. Payment will not be made to a provider if the provider's DCC 94E does not support billing for the child reported for in the same period of the time on the DCC 97. Another criteria for non-payment, um, payment will not be made if a licensed or certified provider cares for a child served by CCAP at a location not specified on the DCC 94. Criteria for non-payment continued. Child care licensure annual reapprovals and renewals of certification must be submitted one month prior to expiration and on a completed with no blanks or missing information child care center license application or certification application for family child care home. Incomplete renewal application for licensure and certification submitted late will delay approval and may result in non-payment for, for providers participating in the child care assistance program. Some final emails and websites to assist you. Additional information on changes to Kentucky Administrative Regulations for Child Care can be found at the FIRST website. Additional questions regarding Kentucky Administrative Regulation for Child Care can be emailed to the email address listed in the second bullet. And you can email um, Michelle DeJean at this email address to be added to the distribution list for the ECE Insider, a Division of Child Care newsletter for Kentucky's early care and education child care providers. In close, if you need technical assistance, the following agencies and their contact information here below can assist. Thank you.